1987, we're talking with Chris Giesman, 1987 Kingsman uh, football squad. Uh, pretty good season, to say the least. 11-1, 7-0 on the, the, the conference season. Once again, the second consecutive Northern Indiana Conference go-around for the Kingsman where they did not lose a football game. We had mentioned earlier when we were talking about 1986 about the greatest game in Penn High School history and about the performance of Rich Carlton. Let's just talk about the greatest game in Penn history. Set the stage for us, Coach. Well, here's the thing. We were, uh, we were ranked number one in the state, and Fort Wayne North was ranked number two. And uh, they were in our sectional at the time. That's when we went east. And the, uh, the tournament draw was different than it is now. They did it on a, like a Monday morning or Tuesday morning. And uh, I had a gym class. We were going out to tennis courts. And Corey Yeoman was free. I said, Corey, listen. Listen to the free. Get our draw and come out and tell me what we got. And... Uh, so I'm out there playing, and here comes Corey running all excited. I'm thinking we got a nice draw, maybe we're going to play all three at home. Maybe we you know, won't see North to the final. Anyway, I, we do. Of course, he got a great draw. I said, who'd we draw? He said, Fort Wayne North. I said, Corey, they're in it feeded too. He said, yeah, I know. I said, we're playing them at home. Oh, oh no, down there. <laughs> we're playing. Them down there, he said, oh man, yeah, that's going to be so exciting, so <laughs> uh, wonderful. So anyway, uh, we went down there, and uh, this is after an undefeated regular season that was absolutely uh, great. Now I have, you know, I could talk about that, but this game was, was actually one of the Penn all-time highlights, and uh, we... Uh, we went, uh, we got down there and there were two TV cameras set up on the field going around. I mean, it was like a, it was like a zoo. It was jammed up an hour before the game started and everybody was excited. And the officials, uh, he said, we can't do the coin flip out here. Get your captains and bring them, bring them to, to, under the tunnel. So we went down there and there was a, there was a, uh, Reporter from Fort Wayne, one of the Fort Wayne papers came down and uh, and and listened and listened in, and uh, he uh, he let off in the, in the front page of the paper. He said uh, they walked down the tunnel and flipped a coin. He said then all hell broke loose. He said anybody says it's just a game, better take a closer look. That's how he started out his article. I mean, and it was exciting, but the thing that 24 to 6, we're down with six minutes to go. 24 to 6 with six minutes to go. And all kinds of things happened in those last six minutes. Number one, we had a first and goal for three and didn't score. We ended up kicking a field goal. People were booing. They were wanting to, you know, the idea. Well, we were going to need a field goal eventually. And I didn't want to be 10 points short after this. I want to be, so we, we kicked it. And, uh, Anyway, Tony C. Mack, who at the time was a 16-year-old senior, <laughs> he ran a post corner and he scored late in the game, and uh, it was it was all tied up, 24-24. Uh, or so we're going into overtime, and they had the ball first on the first down. They ran for a touchdown. Now it's th and they went for two and made it. Now it's 32-24. All our momentum that we had just deflated. And I heard the, uh, we were out there and the, uh, we had all our time out. I went out and I said, okay, let's just go long count first down. So we did, they jumped, we got down to the five yard line. And uh, we finally got it in on fourth down. Now we're down two. And we take another time out, we're going to have to find a two point play. And we'd used about it, we had no trick plays left, we'd used everything. And uh, I heard the uh, a copy of the game, Bob Nagel, it says they're out there now. They're talking about that play that they've worked on every day since August just for a situation like this. They're finally going to get a chance to use it.
The reality was we made up a play. I says, I don't know. I said, I said, well, let's try to, let's just go with the best. Let's throw it to C-Mac. He's six, just throw it up high. We're going to run stick pass, throw it up high, Rich, and let him go up and get it. Well, they kind of figured the same thing. He is double covered, one in front, one in back, jostling him all around. Rich is trying to throw it, trying to throw it. We'd run it back in motion to try to uh, get the linebacker out of there. He didn't get, and our kid turned up field and he slipped and fell. And when he fell, the person covered him, left him. He got back up and ran into the end zone and Rich saw him at the last second, completed it. Steve Hogg. So now it's 32-32. And we got the ball. We scored, go up 39-32. And uh, their first pass, Dr. Brian Boyer, he's now a surgeon here, he intercepted, first career interception, intercepted in the end zone, and just went down, took a knee, and we won the game 39-32. An interesting sideline, one of our best players of all time, Timmy Sharp, was down there with his wife, and it was cold. Six minutes to go, we'd had to punt, and uh, he said, let's go get something to eat and head back. It was 24 to 6, 6 minutes. So they left. They were coming home, and uh, his wife Mary was trying to get scores. And she went, Did you hear that? I thought they said Penn won 39 32. Tim said, Couldn't have been. Well, we left six months ago. It was 24 to 6. That was some other game. She said, Oh, you're right. Tim said he got home. His whole neighborhood was over at his house. When he got out, they started cheering and said, tell us about it, tell us all about it. And Tim said, about what? He said, about the pen game. And Tim said, well, what do you want to know? He said, well, they won. He said, they won. They had to tell him about it. So, I mean, it was, uh, it was just crazy. I remember uh, Dean uh, Spiker came down in the locker room, wanted to talk to the team after it was over. I mean, it was just, uh, it was just the craziest thing. And uh, I can just, I remember everything about that game, but not in the right order. I remember a fumble. I remember this. I remember that. I mean, it was just, I mean, there was no room for error the last six minutes. We had to score every time we had it. And, and I remember like fourth and one on the one kicking a field goal and people going crazy, irate, wanting us to, <laughs> but it was, uh, that was, that was some game and the stakes being what they were, playoffs one versus two down there, great. First team all-conference performers, tight end Tony Cmac, offensive guard Kyle Knight, uh, Mike Winslow, another back, was named all-league defensive ends, Tim Beeler, uh, Brian Donahue, defensive tackle, Aaron uh, Win Bigler, nose guard, all made the all first team in the Northern Indiana Conference. You had some other kids step up on the second team, Eric Jerzak, Steve Pritz, also Ty Galloway, some other young men who had really, really good years. Uh, but the thing about it is you only had six three-year performers in yeah. the senior class to have the, the moxie to be able to come back and, uh, you know, finish the way you guys did. You had to feel pretty good about that. Well, they were, they, we had some excellent players. You know, uh, Tony C. Mack, full ride to Louisville, and uh, he played the starter and played the whole game in the Fiesta Bowl when Louisville beat uh, Alabama. I mean, how is this? Tony starts for, uh, starts for Louisville, they beat Alabama, and he has a day with the Fiesta Bowl Queen that night. Has anybody ever had a better day than that? <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, Darren Curtis was, uh, you know, he, he graduated, excuse me, Randy, uh, Randy Schneider had an absolutely great year. And everybody you mentioned there was a good player. Mike Winslow got hurt in that game and didn't uh, didn't play it next week. And uh, he was our leading ground game or leading scorer. So uh, that, you know, that kind of hurt us the next week. And uh, Ty Galloway was Ole Galloway's son. You've heard of mm -hmm. Ole, a, a legend. And I'll tell you how tough they were. He broke his wrist. Uh, the previous week and he did surgery like on Monday and Ole called me up and says uh, you know I, I'm we're on a fishing trip this weekend but I just wanted to know if you can uh, patch up uh, tie and play him it's okay with me 
<laughs> and I, said, I don't think we're going to be able to early, but we'll give it, we'll look into it. Doctor said, absolutely not. So that was the end of that. But uh, that was, you know, those are tough kids back there in those days. And uh, as a matter of fact, we had to play Tony some both ways. And uh, uh, the next week as a DB, and uh, we lost down at Carmel. And uh, that was... Uh, uh, interesting thing, uh, Ron Meyer came out and talked to our team before the game. He was coaching the Colts that year, and he'd spent one year as a head coach at Penn. So that was uh, that was an exciting year, and that uh, that uh, Fort Wayne North game. I mean, that was just never get over. People still talk about it. You know, it seems to me every time you look at a at a Penn roster, Chris, that uh, there's a current coach coaching in the program. We mentioned Cools. He was a senior. Here's a kid who shows up on uh, this roster here who's uh, doing a pretty good job right now down at Fisher's High School and that's uh, uh, Judd. He's had a John, John Judd. Judd. Yeah, he's a he's, kid who's a, a lifetime coach now. He's the defensive coordinator and he does an absolutely great job. Uh, he works for Rick Wimmer down there mm -hmm. and uh, yeah he is uh, he is very, very highly regarded, and uh, I'm very, very happy to uh, uh, to see that. He's, uh, he does start out, I believe, at West Noble and ended mm -hmm. up down there. And you also had Mark Reddy, was a yes. was a player on this team that went into coaching for a while. Yes. Well, I tell you what, it's, just, it's, it's like Coach Lightfoot over there at Bethel. It, he turns out coaches every time he turns around. Mm -hmm. We had uh, the other thing too that you mentioned families is sharps and humans. We had four foster boys that all played linebacker at Penn: uh, John, Mark, Scott, and uh, the first one. I can't. Is it John? You got it. 